Sigmund Freud is a legendary figure in the history of psychology, and he is credited with some of the most important discoveries in human history, including the discovery of the unconscious mind. However, in most areas of academia, at least today, Sigmund Freud is seen as borderline pseudoscientific. A cornerstone to Freudian psychoanalysis was this idea that repressed memories can resurface during therapy and provide the client with cathartic release of emotion. While well, science has finally caught up to this idea, and actually proves that repression is a legitimate thing and that there are neural pathways that promote and enable repression in the human mind, giving us the ability to purposely forget past experiences, emotions, or even entire memories. Sigmund Freud says the essence of repression lies simply in turning something away and keeping it at a distance from the conscious. Repression was seen as a very natural mechanism of humanity. It enabled us to repress the sexual and primal urges of the unconscious mind, enabling us to function properly in society. Repression can also be seen as a defense mechanism of the brain. When we go through a traumatic event, or there's something that happens to us that we don't want to fully come to terms with, we bottle it up, we push it down. But these memories aren't necessarily forgotten. Repression and forgetting are two different things. When you forget a memory, you're unable to retrieve it at a later time. But for repression, you're pushing that memory down into the unconscious, avoiding thinking about it, but ultimately it's still there and we can find it. Freud's theory was that these repressed thoughts wreaked havoc on the conscious mind and would oftentimes have a snowball effect where maybe a few challenging thoughts or experiences bottle up into an entire complex. And since by their very nature, repressed thoughts are not able to be thought of, and so we have to figure out different mechanisms to get them to come out. This is where Freud and his contemporaries came up with ideas such as free association or dream analysis, and even the analysis of what we call Freudian slips. All three of these, in theory, allow the unconscious mind to speak to us directly. It is the language of the unconscious mind, we can call it intuitive thinking. Using the contents from these explorative methods, we can discover the nature of these repressed thoughts and bring them to light. This was psychoanalysis. So of course we have to answer the question, how has this been verified? Well, neuroscience is on the job. A large blemish on the legacy of Sigmund Freud was that many of his ideas were just that, ideas, they were theories. They had internal logic to them, but they were extrapolations of various ideas that he had. They didn't necessarily have solid evidence to support everything that he said. Research published in Science actually vindicated Sigmund Freud's theory of repression. The participants learned a variety of word pairs, for example, curious, author, reckless magician. Then they were hooked to an MRI and given the first word of the pair and instructed to either think of the corresponding word or deliberately not think of the corresponding word. The researchers concluded that certain areas of the brain were actually associated and activated during the act of repression and that this negatively impacted future recall of the paired word. So if you learn the pair sleepy toad and were told to repress toad when I showed you sleepy, at a later date, your ability to remember that pair would actually decrease. It's not because you forgot anything. It's not because you didn't practice as much as the other participants or as much as you did with other word pairs. It's because you actively tried to repress it at one point during the experiment. So what does this mean for psychology? And what does this mean for us as humans trying to understand our own mind? Well, we have to be careful. When attempting to drag these repressed memories out of our subconscious mind, we have to be careful and make sure we understand the distinction between a repressed memory and the suggested memory. The problem is when trying to recall the repressed memory, trying to pull that out of the unconscious mind, we might actually form a new one or manipulate one that we already had. This is why it's so crucial that we speak, quote unquote, the language of the unconscious. Again, this uses things like free association, dream analysis, and active imagination to peel back the layer of our conscious mind and peer into the unconscious. I hope this video puts Freud's theories into a completely new light, at least that of repression. It shows you that he wasn't just a pseudo-scientific madman, but he did have some rhyme to his reason. So what are your perceptions of Sigmund Freud? I know that he's a very controversial figure. Some people like him, some people hate him. Personally, I think of him somewhere in the middle. I think that he's an extremely important figure. His studies, his ideas should not be forgotten, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he was correct about everything. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you on the next video.